What's up, guys? I'm John, back with the 23rd episode of the 5D Warrior Podcast. As always, I'm here with my co-host, Corey. And I'm here with... John. But we're, today we're talking, we're diving into all things love, lust, and desire. And how we long for the, we desire these, like, opportunities to, to be lustful and stuff. And replace being lustful with with love and bring love into the equation rather than always being lust always lusting desiring for something external and when you love can, seems to be more of an omnipresent <clears> thing <throat> rather than directing it towards things or misdirecting what you would call love which is lust towards something a desire towards something you create that attachment towards it. And are you are you necessarily loving things you're looking at from separate as you? That's why it's like marriage is like the sacred union between two people. And that love is just always there. There's nothing that can break that. Suppo- okay. yeah. That's what w- marriage is supposed to be. Now, now it's in supposed, our modern it's society. It's supposed to be unconditional. And that unconditional love comes from within, right? And we're like, when we're constantly being lustful and, and having desires and stuff, it puts us in a position where we're seeking love and giving identity to things that are making it separate from us, rather than looking at using love at the like the, at the singular and like being one with everything. And when you realize you're one with everything, you give that love from a place of oneness, from a place of unconditional love. And that all resides in here. So. We need to start doing that. Yeah, because you love yourself if you see the world as yourself and you can come to love everything as one singular. And we talk about singularity a lot, but not looking at the world as separate from you. We talk about separation, the distortion of separation, how we have the distortion of self and we're seeing the world externally and not as ourselves. Yeah, and I can have, I have a story of this, and like, I, I guess we really have to do with love, but like, yesterday, I, when I was at, I was at my uh, brother's college helping him move out, one of his roommates had a gun, right? And he was showing me his gun, and he was like, yeah, like, I'm not afraid to use this thing, blah, 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 and all this stuff, and I could just see, I almost saw like his aura, like I did see like, or for what I thought was his aura, and I, I realized that like, He's just like an innocent little kid, bro. Like, we're all just children. We're all just like young souls at the end of the day. And like, that would be stripped away from him so quickly if he like pulled the trigger on, on a gun and like took someone else's life. Like we see what's in the news with all these gun things now. You can't even, you can pa- blame these people, but like you shouldn't be passing judgment on anyone because like, again, you don't, I, it's, it's fucked, but like, you know what I'm saying? Everyone is in a shit. Everyone is, has like, yes, they have that's the most raw instance. state of being. Like that kid, he fucking shot up his school, but like he did that because of how like deeply hurt he was. And like, if he felt that's the only way he could like be at peace, then like that's what he did to like be at peace. And like, he, I believe now that he, by doing such an act like that, like projected his his consciousness out into almost like a void type place, I would like to think. Well, because think about like how many people his, that one interaction impacts because so many consciousness people. on a global scale and thinking of this interconnected consciousness with the internet now too, not just us being connected spiritually, but being connected technologically. So this happens in his actions get this negative yeah, it really does from reaction from the, the whole entire world. world. Seven billion souls are now, I would say, enraged. I would say over a billion people probably. You think a billion people have I seen would, that all, story? I would say all of America knows. That's what, about, what probably Three, a little over 300, 300 million people. And you know the modern Europe people, they all know about it. They hear it. They clown America on the news because they're like, we're the only country this shit happens in. And... I would also like to bring it back. It, we are the only country that this should happen in because we are probably the number one country in the world that acts on our desires and is constantly desiring and seeking out stuff that is external from ourselves. You don't see this going on in Eastern countries such as like India. Like there are mass shootings in India. Those people have adopted an Eastern philosophy of oneness that where it's a collect, we're at a collective level and. 
99% of America is just not at a collective level and we're identifying with all these external things and forcing ourselves to act on separateness rather than singularity and it, it takes us away from the true like unconditional love and the collective consciousness that we're trying to get to. Yeah. And it all comes back to seeing the love in everything and the and, light in everything. Yeah. Noticing how the two are symbiotic in nature in too. Because think about the sun and it provides for us. That light coming from the sun is providing us with life, one, and love subsequently for life. Because the earth as a conscious organism, Gaia, is giving us is built her, off of love. Is built off of love. And she's providing for us what to the blueprint for what, how our reality is going to seem but the sun is giving the life for that blueprint so this realm of earth that we get to experience is coming directly from light which turns into life that we can enjoy and love in and we need to return that return the light love because when you see light love and love light as the same thing and it's just flowing through you they are interchangeable yeah, no, I like that a lot. And <clears throat> we talk about, like, with the... We bring, like, the... Almost bring the two one, and we bring we talk about the love a lot. And, like, <clears throat> we also talk about the 5D, because that's our brand. 5D warrior, like, whatever. But I feel like a lot of people don't even understand what the 5... <clears throat> excuse me. What the 5D is. Like, the fifth density or fifth dimension being that of wisdom, and the fourth density or dimension being that of love. So people are always like, oh, like, are we just skipping the fourth dimension, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, we aren't skipping the fourth density, because we're in the third right now. What we're essentially doing is tap, you can tap into all these higher dimensions. And we're tapping into that of the fourth, which is love, and that of wisdom. We're gaining the knowledge and spreading it into the third dimension as wisdom. And we're bringing this, we're making the two one, like Jesus said in the Bible. The wisdom and love, <clears throat> bringing it together to create a 5D new earth. And 5D just being the state of consciousness that we're all resonating with it, not it being physically in, a, in the fifth dimension. Because earth right now is in a third dimension, but if we, this is all very confusing, but if we bring the fifth dimension of wisdom and love to a third density planet, we will essentially raise the vibration of Earth and be that of the fourth Exactly. Density. You can access these planes of existence, these <laughs> densities of consciousness right now through altered states of consciousness. It's almost think like about math work, meditation. Yeah, exactly. And like, think about it in terms of the astral plane and the causal plane, right? You can think of the fourth density as like the astral plane where everything exists, but... In, everything exists in... Um, potential. Potentiality. Everything exactly. exists in potentiality. And it, that's how... This third dimension is too, but like in the fourth, like literally anything exists at any given time. It's infinite in nature in the fourth dimension. Like the third dimension isn't is infinite in nature, but it's also finite in the sense that like we will die. We're limited by we can't go limited. through this. Yeah, like I can't pass through this. I can't just like snap my fingers and like have something. Like in the like think about in a dream. Like when you're dreaming. You're in the fourth dimension. You could say like your 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 spirit astral projects every night when you're having a dream, because you're just projecting your consciousness into a different reality of existence. And when you're lucid in those dreams or conscious of those dreams, you can ascent, you're essentially tapped into the higher fourth dimension. And that is why like if you're lucid, you could literally make anything happen with the snap of your finger. Precisely. You think you think like a lot of times like for me personally like when I know I'm lucid dreaming, I'll like go to jump or like I'll be flying or something. And like, or I'll be struggling to fly rather. And then all of a sudden be like, holy shit, like I'm just dreaming, like now fly. Mm -hmm. And I'll just take off. And that is the infinity of the fourth dimension that I'm, mm -hmm. we're tapping into through dreams. Or like essentially like people have like near death experiences. Yeah, well the dreams is a great subject because when you become lucid, it is astral traveling. Not essentially, but <clears throat> no, that is. you're, you can you're be so boxed old. in by that dream world, which is the lower astral plane. But then once you, you can break yes. that reality. And I've had experiences multiple now where I've realized I was in a dream and decided to leave the dream outside of the dream realm and the whole world shatters in uh -huh. front of you. Now, when you leave that dream realm, 
you are then entering the middle or upper astral planes. The upper astral planes would be angels and like high archangels. High archangels, shit. exactly. But then the middle astral but plane. Again, we used to call them angels and or demons, but they're literally just other yeah. consciousness. It's just more consciousness that we aren't tapped into yet. That still feel that we still see them as separate from us. So like, we sometimes like will push their like love away mm -hmm. because we're not allowing them to be helpful to us. Mm -hmm. Because we see separateness. The same thing where people trick themselves Think. that they're not seeing through the veil. Say say they're sort of on, they're doing meditation, breathwork, or they're on some sort of psychedelic trip and they're seeing through that veil and they tell themselves, <clears throat> I'm hallucinating, I'm hallucinating, like this isn't real. This is separate from reality. But yes. like, at the same time, they are seeing that aura around that person. They are seeing that tree happening. breathing. They're feeling that interconnectedness of the world, and they try and push that away. I was watching the Joe Rogan podcast, and he had Krista Stefano on, who's a stand-up comic, whatever. But he was talking about having, like, he's always had, like, high anxiety. To be brief, he was in high school, all-boys Catholic school in Brooklyn. His mom worked in the Twin Towers on 9-11. He thought his mom died, he couldn't get contact with his mom. And he says like this day like unlocked like a Pandora's box of like negative emotions like into his life. Okay. So to this day, he, he's working on it, right? But from 9-11, he's never been get able to get over the fact that like he really thought he lost his mom. And like he says now, like he projects that onto every female figure in his life because he if they don't answer him, he thinks they're like dead. And like he has like crippling anxiety. Which, it sounds silly, but, like, that's just him. You can't, like, mm -hmm. it's, it, that does happen to people. But whatever. So Joe Rogan was like, oh, have you meditated? Have you done uh, mushrooms, like, psychedelics? Have you used marijuana to try to, like, help, like, ease this anxiety? Whatever. And he was like, yeah, I've tried edibles, like, one time. And he was, Joe was like, how'd it go, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, like, I was tweaking. He was tweaking, like, hella hard off these edible brownie or gummy bears, whatever he ate. And... Joe was like, well, the, the issue is, like, you didn't embrace that reality. Like, you were pushing so hard to be like, this isn't real. Like, I'm dying. Like, I'm having a heart attack. Like, he was, like, going through it a lot because he was so, like, high. But he was just, like, pushing. So it was just two forces, like, the high and, like, his mental psyche, like, saying, this isn't real. This isn't happening, blah, blah, blah. And when you just, like, succumb to those those like experiences like it becomes like blissful at, in nature like when we're aware we go through our everyday life just trying to like push we were talking about this like reacting to everything rather than observing or letting stuff be in our being and like by doing that we like push away like the love of everything and like we push away the natural order of the universe we push away death we too. push away death we're big on pushing away death in western culture we think it, we look at it, like, why Why do I go to a funeral and everyone's crying? I knew, like, something was off when I was a little kid. Not that I didn't, ex I didn't fully under experience, understand death, obviously, as a little kid. But, like, my pop died when I was probably, like, seven. And, like, I'm sitting there watching, like, all of my family, like, devastated, right? And, like, at that time, like, I was obviously close to my pop. He was my pop. But, like, I didn't have, like, that physical connect, like, whatever, like, connection with him to the point where, like, I wasn't like sad that he, not that I wasn't sad, but like, you know what I mean? Like it didn't like have like an impact on me. No, I understand. And like, I'm seeing this like, why is everyone crying, blah, blah, blah. Cause like we identify so hard with these people and we love these people so much that like when they leave us, we're, we think like, they're actually leaving we're, us yeah, too. Yeah, they don't go, any, they didn't go anywhere. If anything, they went to a better place. That's why we talk about heaven in the Bible. Like, like why are we getting up? Even if you're a Christian, Catholic, whatever, we talk about dying. We talk, if you even start with even if you're Christian or Catholic. Even if you're Christian or Catholic, we talk about dying and we say our soul leaves and goes to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So why are we so sad when people die? It should be a celebratory thing. It should be a party that you've passed on to, into heaven. Because even though it might have been, they might have went out a shitty way, been sick, whatever, like freak accident, they now have passed on into heaven, which is supposed to be like the best thing ever mm -hmm. it should be a, it should be a celebration of life and i think a lot of times we get caught up in the mourning part and especially in the west we try and push away death we're scared of death we're scared of the unknown i think more precisely rather than just yeah, death 
we're scared of the unknown because like people like I've told people to meditate or whatever I'm sure you have too and they're like yo like I can't even sit with my thoughts for like five minutes like no wonder you're so scared to die bro like you can't sit with your thoughts for five minutes what you don't even know what the fuck's gonna happen on that other side maybe you're thinking with, you're with your thoughts for all of eternity bro I don't know you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so like no wonder like it's like and this is not just like my friends this is like 99% of people in the world, right? There's there's this analogy, they're not even an analogy, but like statistic they say, who knows if it's real or not. There's the 1% that controls us, right? And then there's the, what, 95% that like, are, are just aware. completely unconscious. And then there's what, 4% that knows what's going on? Yeah. Like people like light workers and shit. So, uh, I'm a Pleiadian starseed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding but if you get that joke that means you're at the right place <laughs> but whatever um I, I completely lost my train of thought <laughs> I had to, I said the light worker and I was like yeah, yeah I was like yeah, the, uh, I'm a play in starship yeah I mean there's people trying to awaken the planet <laughs> I, I don't know how we got there though no we're just talking about people awakening the planet like yeah those like I was using the example of the one percent that control us, the okay. ninety-five that okay. are completely unconscious, and then there's the four percent that's light workers. Mm -hmm. So like, like, please, you start seeds. But that's the analogy. So like, us as the four percent, like, we're at least somewhat. We might not be fully tapped into the lo like unconditional love yet, but we're at least on the path there. And for us to be on the path, and you guys help us and make the collective like that much greater we could move into a new earth of like 5D consciousness. And, and that's why we're, we're repping we're the, the new merge. 5D warrior shirt. The new we got, 5D warrior It's a Jedi merge. warrior shirt right here. Keep the yeah. axe and the and the lightsaber. And yeah, the, check it out on Spreadshot. We got the we'll helmet. Put the, we'll put the link in the, link the in description. Bio, or description. And the bio. Yeah. But. Yeah. I don't know. Go buy them. They're awesome. They're awesome. Very nice material too. Yeah, great. Tons of shout out Spreadshot. Shout out Spreadshot. So what else? We need an we advertisement. We do need advertisement. Let's start ba brainstorming for an advertisement. Bang, we already said that. Yeah, I like bang energy. Bang. We're gonna get some bangs next time we make a podcast. We are. Mark our words. Mark That's, our words. We're drinking natural mountain springs. Yeah, good. this is very shout 5D out, of us. Shout out, shout out TJ's. The plastic, the plastic bottles. Yeah, TJ's Trader Joe's. Yeah, some don't. organic avocados. Oh my goodness, I love an organic avocado. Yo, you know who I want to link with? Who are we linking with? The kid that does the fruit videos, but he's like conscious. Oh, and he eats the fruit while he's talking. Uh huh. Right? Yeah, I know. I forget if he's got the long hair. Let's try and link with him. He's got like two million followers. Yo, help us get, I forget his name, attention. He's the fruit guy. That's a niche. That's what, we need a niche. We do need a niche. Mm -hmm. Help us find our niche. That's our niche right that there. That is our niche. That's 5D. our niche right now. So since we're going with 5D, we're sitting in the woods with a bag on our camera, in the rain, enjoying mother nature. Yes. And not being afraid of our own minds. We're trying not to, at least. Not buying into our own minds. Don't be scared of what people are gonna say about you. What does it matter? Like we start posting these videos, and it's yeah. Like, and at first, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, "Yo, what are people gonna say about me? Like, why should I give a fuck? You know who doesn't give a fuck what people say about them? Who? Tate. Shout out Andrew Tate. <laughs> top G, top striker. We are five D top strikers. Top G. Top G's. Like, we driving five D. We you these. can't let yeah, and, and <laughs> wield the machetes. You can't let people determine what you how you live your life like when you're so caught up in your uh and a lot of people do this because they're lustful honestly like a lot of people aren't like pure in their like being like all the time leave so we it's not loud as fuck we got a visitor see turn around i'm just gonna cut this out i don't know who's back here What was I talking about? Talking about the lustful nature of, uh, um, of 
not buying into your own mind. Oh, yeah. All right. Stop buying into your own minds because with that comes we let people dictate what we should be doing with our lives. And people like Andrew Tate, he's blown up on TikTok. You don't let anyone tell him what to do with his life. He just be doing it, whatever the fuck he wants to do. And that's how we all have to live our lives because if you're not living life like that, you're not being pure and you're not being true, true to yourself. True self. You're not yes. being true to yourself. You're letting people determine what how you live your life and you're not being your true self. Like we're all like everyone's a little self conscious, whatever, but like you gotta break away from that. Because it really doesn't matter. This is a finite life and you just gotta do whatever you gotta do. Like we're trying to bang out videos here, like we don't I don't really care what people say about me because I, I think this is my true self and I think this is my purpose so to say I think you do too so like, it agree. doesn't matter what the people say and like when you're true and when you're in full alignment you will be prosperous and abundant when you're in full alignment you are abundant and like therefore the universe will reward us and reward you for being your true being that like all these other people are gonna start hating on you mm -hmm. because like because when you're putting out those such positive raw, vibrations positive energy, that though, love into there, you're going to receive that love in all various forms from everything you do, and just by not allowing others' negative vibration or energy to catch on to you and protect your own energy, yeah, and follow that energy. true self, it's that big. passion, and you begin to become a more loving being like as like as i've went down this spiritual path we like to say i've just sort of become more a, i have more of a will to just live on a daily basis not that i ever wanted to kill myself but like but like just like you wake up in the morning and you're yeah, like oh my god stuff. another day on planet earth and just like having that gratuity Facts. towards being alive and like what you get to do i don't have to go to work i get to go to work i don't have to get up and go to the gym i get to go up and go to the gym and Facts. you start looking at life through that lens of just thankfulness and love and abundance and it comes back to you tenfold because once you start to notice the big things and you notice the little things and it's all little things and Everything the world is just full thing. of little things that can just put a smile on your face just little experiences happening all day every day and like that's what we talk about like bringing the god into all ex all like facets of your life everything you're doing god as in presence and god as in love so when you're fully present in the moment acting in your true god nature you're experiencing that presence and that love because the only way to experience like your true beingness is to be present and what is that true beingness just simply love so we're just radiating love by being fully present in the moment and you could do that too all right let's wait i'm gonna pause it and we'll continue Smoke come out. Don't matter, we're doing the same thing, bro. Yo, that was hella good. We just went in. That's a I won't, but I'd be really hyped if someone had <laughs> You know, Cassie does. Alright. <laughs> we're recording. Alright, where do we come from? I don't know, they just try. Oh, we're talking about being presence with love and being. Stop not being your true self because when you're your true self, you experience presence. And then okay, what okay, that okay. presence is, is God. And what is that God? Love. That's okay, okay. So, when we start to live in our passion, our true self, we start in to alignment. see in alignment, singularity. We start to see the true nature of everything, and it's playful and it's, it's happy and always moving. The dance of life, and you get to experience it without judgment. And when you can look at life without judgment and see life as it is, as you are, 
and just feel the motion of the ocean, man. The motion of the, the ocean. motion is the ocean. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Like, stop like shit's gonna happen. Negative shit's gonna happen. Positive shit's gonna happen in your life. Stop. We talked about this in our last one of our last ones. Stop identifying with it and just see it as it is. See it objectively rather than putting all of your emotions in it mm -hmm. and like either reacting to it or like yeah just reacting to it because like when you react to it you identify with it and you give it all of your energy like we can talk about project or not project or don't project your energy on people but i meant to say protecting your energy mm -hmm. like being conscious is the ability to protect your energy at all times because we talk about god and drag everything is drag everything is god and drag and we have to whether it be positive or negative we have to protect our energy from that stuff because it's we're all just raw energy and we what we identify that energy with is what it will become so if we go out and we start giving out positive vibrations to the earth as we talk about and seeing the lens of isness and reality and operating through your true self you then begin to to love will flow through you, light will flow through you. You'll be more dense in light, we say, when you're moving up the densities of consciousness. You'll be more dense of light, you'll be abundant, and you'll be attractive. Like, when yeah, you start to fill with this light, you, well, the law of attraction, it shows that the universe will come to you. So when you have all that love, people try and get it from you, right? And like, People try and take that love away from you because they know you've got a lot of it. You're magnetic. Exactly. So, yeah, that's what the law of attraction is. By us putting out all these this raw energy, we will be gaining back that raw energy tenfold in whatever positive or negative, whatever we ten choose to identify it with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just out here fucking dodging energy all day yeah. long. People's fucking projecting constantly. Just, like, do dodging and leaving, man. Mm -hmm. Like... But when we have all that energy for ourselves, we get to experience the loving nature of reality in its truest form. And you go out in nature and you see the symbiotic nature of the trees and the bugs and the birds chirping and the sun going and up and rain. knowing it's always going to go down and come up the next day. And you start to see the dance like we talk about. It's the dance it's, of life and we're just participating in it. Yes. So start dancing, bro. Start dancing. Start boogieing on the dance floor and the dance floor is mother earth baby yes let's dance our way to the 5d baby we're dancing to the 5d on it's like mother the God. dance it's like the dance they call it the dance in march madness because you're just dancing to the to the final to the ncaa champion because what is the destination there is none there's there is no, no destination. destination so stop forcing everything away and just live in this present moment and you will experience the true infinite self in here and we say be here now, now. we say it all the time and that's now. the most powerful statement i have for you because it Three just words be here now that's all it most is. most powerful words in the universe where else would you rather be than on this lovely beautiful planet floating through the cosmos on this big rock we call home and experiencing infinity but unfortunately, what is not infinite... Time on this podcast is no longer infinite. So we gotta wrap it up. Today we're calling out... Phew. We gotta it's always a tough one. It's always a tough one to call people out. Who's in the hot seat? Um, oh. No, we're calling out Amber Heard. <laughs> we're calling out Amber Heard Amber because... Heard. Yeah. So, honestly, Amber you're Heard, the you're in the pooper. gutter. You're the bed pooper, Amber Heard. <laughs> You're just a bad... You gotta, Amber Heard is in the gutter. Yeah. She's off my hot or not yourself. list. You gotta climb your way out of there, Amber Heard. Yeah. Trying to Shame. take my boy Johnny Shame down on you. for how much $100 million she was countersuing him for. Good riddance. Well, Johnny Depp, you know what they've been saying? Amber Heard's in debt. Yo. She's in $15 million in debt right now. <laughs> Amber Heard, we're calling you out. Suck it. YouTube, we're always calling you out. We're, we're watching, watching you, you, YouTube. Tune in for episode 24 of the 5D Warrior Podcast coming this week. And rep the, the merch, the 5D help us merch. Out and help us grow the brand by copying the merch out yes. of our spreadsheet. Appreciate link in Insta, everybody watching. Link in TikTok. We appreciate you. If you want to help see us grow, help us, help, help us and cop some merch. Reesh.
Peace out, y'all. Welcome to the five, dude.